before we start, like, looks like uh, you guys had a good lunch. How was the lunch? All good? Okay. Uh, also, before we start, how many of us over here are Android app developers? Remaining are iOS. Okay. Uh, can be Windows as well. You know, there are a few phones there. <coughs> so, what we'll talk in today's talk is primarily for the Android developers and also for any any uh, company CXOs here, CMOs here, marketing guys here, any marketing folks? Very few. Okay. So, uh, the platform which I'm going to talk about takes care of two things. Uh, one it gives you a beautiful dashboard or an insights and analytics for the CMO to, to understand how the app usage and, and you know, the things are going inside in, in their product. Uh, and for the developers, it gives, again, a set of features like uh, you can track issues, uh, errors, uh, crashes, and then uh, you can also do custom logging based on you know, uh, certain use case scenarios of the user, how they use the app. Uh, so the whole idea of this is, <clears throat> this is cross-platform. So if you if your company tends to develop an app for iOS tomorrow or or Windows Phone as well, they can absolutely use the same platform uh, to engage the users. <clears throat> so what we'll what we're going to talk about here is uh, this platform, the capabilities, and some use case scenarios. Um, why we would actually need this platform? Um, so. Can, can we name one of the favorite apps that we use most often on our smartphone? Flipkart? Any other apps? Ola? Yep. Yep. Uh, any, anything? No one uses Facebook, really? Okay. Uh, so there, there are a lot of apps, and then apps, uh, one most important thing, while you want to ensure that uh, it's it's been used by users, and you want to start monetizing it. Is the UX of the app? Uh, that's of course one of the primary criteria. But there happens that in this smartphone world, where you have tons of apps, uh, 100, 200 apps installed on, uh, you know, someone's OnePlus 2, and then it becomes very difficult for for you to keep track whether someone's using my service or he's going to pay me. For instance, can I can give you a best example of uh, Wink Music? How many of you use Wink Music? No one? Uh, Sawan. Sawan has a beautiful app as well. So uh, all these guys let you stream music. The, the biggest problem these guys face is um, the users are not using this app as often as they should be using the app, and which kind of hurts them in the subscriptions. So while you create an app, you would want to have a strategy where you can ensure that users always uh, tend to use your app, either uh, the, the reason could be that the user doesn't know all the features that your app has, or uh, you know you are kind of um, throwing a lot of notifications there. Because I have seen a few quotes um, on the stores where someone, I think this was with Snapdeal sometime back, where they started pushing like 10, 15 notifications all within one hour, and people just want to delete this app, uh, you know, uninstall this app because they don't want such bad experience. So if you automate notifications, thinking is going to be more engaging, uh, it might not really help. So you would need some smarter solution over there. <clears throat> so we'll talk about that. A quick video. Uh, this has an audio. Let me quickly plug this. Uh, those could get very annoying, and users might even delete your app. Okay, uh, let me just... Whoa! You decide to get an... So a little bit about the platform, how things work, uh, use All case right. scenarios. you've published an app. So now what? You have no clue if it's used often or simply gets forgotten. Oh. To keep your users interested, you start spamming them with push notifications. However, those could get very annoying and users might even delete your app. Whoa. You decide to get an analytics tool. Well, <clears throat> now you have loads of data, but you still need to set up campaigns for every possible situation and send it to every platform separately. That just takes forever. Isn't there a better way to keep your users interested? Boom! Introducing Azure Mobile Engagement. 
Azure Mobile Engagement is a platform that combines analytics with push notifications and in-app messaging campaigns. It monitors the activity in real time, like what pages are visited when and where. But it actually goes way beyond that. You can ask any question, like after how many visits a user is most likely to post a review or buy something. With this info, Azure Mobile Engagement helps you automate targeted campaigns that work on every platform and any device with an internet connection, even a smart TV. Finally, Azure Mobile Engagement also recognizes user segments for you. For example, the ones that are losing interest. You can directly send something really cool to win them over again. Awesome! Azure Mobile Engagement. Pilot your apps. Cool. So uh, with this platform, uh, we can actually keep a track of people losing interest, not logging in our app, or maybe people using our app without logging in, uh, using without doing a social login, which means probably they're not sticky enough. For instance, I've seen a few apps which uh, gives you more features, or it's more, uh, you know, they only start pushing notifications once you sign in that app, and and which the user might not even know about it that he needs to sign in and he doesn't sign in because for instance flight searches app trip clear trip or make my trip uh, you can use these apps all the while without actually logging in the app now if i were to um, give a big deal or to a particular user i i probably don't want to blast that deal because probably it's going to be misused or not used i probably want to target some actual users who use my app and give those deals to them. Or maybe uh, some users who haven't really logged in, I would want them to log in and I'm going to give some deal to them uh, to make sure that they log in. Now, we will uh, see all these data uh, and we'll also see how we integrate this. So integration from a developer standpoint is pretty simple. Uh, we will see that a little later. <coughs> Uh, the whole idea of this mobile engagement is actionable insights. Uh, based on that, you take some um, action to get to ensure that your users are there on your platform, uh, lure them with uh, some some coupon codes or something, uh, and they will be there in, in your app platform. And then a value-added push and communications platform. So this care, takes care of push notifications as well, uh, using all the platform notification services from either Apple or GCM or from uh, WNS, that's Windows. So it takes care of that. And it also takes care of some campaigns that your CMO would w want to work on. Like uh, you want to do a quick survey with your users, right? Uh, generally, how would you do that? Uh, either you do it on a web, so direct him to the web, bad experience, or uh, you, you, you can have a native interface within the app where you can get a quick survey. Uh, now, with the mobile engagement, you don't need to build that piece. Uh, all you have to configure this is from the back end, uh, what questions you want to ask and then push this campaign. And then you can select a set of users you want to push this to, like three, year, three days old users, or users who haven't yet signed in, or users with a particular tag on them, uh, who, who, have, who have been looking for a particular product, for instance, Flipkart. Uh, if you're looking for uh, a particular product on Flipkart, I can tag you with that uh, product ID or group product ID. And then uh, based on, uh, I can start pushing you offers on that particular product ID itself. And then I can run campaigns to ensure how successful was that. I want to measure that campaign as well. It's not just about pushing a notification and then, then forgetting about it. But I would want to track how many people actually viewed the notification, how many people viewed and then took an action, uh, went, you know, uh, called an intent to actually uh, create or get into a particular product details page, uh, and then went ahead to buy that. So I might want to track all these things in a success scenario for, for my marketing folks. So uh, you can absolutely do that with this. <coughs> and then uh, open APIs and easy integration is possible. So if you have a CRM system or you know already using that, uh, and if you want to integrate this with uh, mobile engagement so that when uh, the, the sales actually happens in a B2B scenario, uh, and you do an entry in the CRM system that should actually trigger some notifications or run a campaign in an integrated manner with this, uh, it could do that. And then uh, data protection, privacy, that's something you would always see uh, in a Microsoft slide. So we'll just skip that. Uh, regarding the actionable insights, now trigger actions, uh, you can control this. We'll see this little, uh, maybe in the demo itself, that will be more explanatory. And then push communication platform. So you can use this whole uh, mobile engagement platform as a push communication platform as well. So even if you want to push something like 6,000 uh, pushes per second, uh, the beauty here is 
uh, which uh, we faced it with some certain customers uh, is uh, you can track those pushes as well in all three platforms, uh, even on Android, iOS, and Windows, which means uh, while you do a push campaign and uh, you want to see how many users actually received it on a device and how many actually clicked on it, all those details are captured in here. So uh, if you want to do this where you want to push a notification, doesn't go through, uh, keep a check of it, re-push, retry pushing the notifications. So you can absolutely do that, and you don't have to create any logic to keep a track of that. <clears throat> so you can absolutely integrate with CRM, CMS systems. And uh, uh, data is well encrypted, so you don't need to really worry about uh, the production of the data the, the, which you're sending on Azure, because this is something hosted uh, this is a service hosted on Azure, so your data goes to Azure, uh, which is some cloud service, and then from there it gets uh, uh, pushed to the PNSs, so uh, the data is kind of secure over there. It's all, the communication happens in an encry encrypted uh, channel. Okay, so the whole idea, uh, use case scenarios, which I can think of uh, mobile engagement is maybe, uh, you can have a welcome strategy uh, to start with. Uh, you can have something like when a user registers in your app, uh, you can absolutely push, create a set of notification which will only go to the newly registered users. So you can set up four or five campaigns upfront uh, of what you would want or measure as a success criteria of your app. For instance, uh, someone who installs my app, he logs in my app using his social ID. Uh, that's one success criteria. If he doesn't do that, uh, I will have another campaign which will get blasted uh, after, on day three, uh, which will ask them to sign in to use some new features, which he's not able to use right now without signing in. So I will run that on, on day three for those guys who haven't yet signed in. For people who have signed in, probably I'll give them a week, and then I will push them a notification saying there's some cool products. Uh, now, once you push this and they go, go inside the app, you can learn more about their user path inside the app. What kind of products are they using? And I'm going to log that set of products uh, and tag this user for that particular group product ID, saying uh, he's interested more in sports good. Uh, so I'm going to give more offers or run a campaign uh, for only this set of users who are interested in the sports group. So you can absolutely do that without having to, like, do even, you know, once you've integrated the SDK with your app, uh, you don't need to worry about the push campaigns. <coughs> and uh, one key thing which is not mentioned here is, uh, uh, especially if you are working in R&D scenario, uh, this is pretty simple. Wow, something just, okay, that's fine. So if you're working in R&D scenario, and, uh, or you want to use something like a trial of this whole service, this is uh, for available for free up to 100 users, uh, complete functionality. So you can absolutely try this at home with your devices, your friends' devices. If you're a startup, you can absolutely test this out. Uh, and um, the pricing goes something like till up to uh, 10, 10 lakh or uh, yeah, something like uh, 1 lakh users and above. It starts per active monthly user. It charges you around 60. Uh, uh, that's, that's the charge, but that only happens once you exceed 100 users up to 1 lakh, and if you go beyond that to 100 lakh, uh, it becomes 40 pesos and then becomes 30 pesos and then, you know, uh, it becomes even lesser, so uh, it goes <coughs> really less uh, the more users you have, but for trial purpose, uh, 100 users, it's absolutely free. Okay, so you can absolutely ma uh, manage the whole marketing portfolio with this, so uh, generally we have seen some issues where you have a set of developers and then probably this bunch of marketeers and marketeers want something, uh, developers don't know what they want, and, and the whole integration kind of takes much longer time to build. So using this tool, um, you have a beautiful UI for the marketeers. Uh, all the developers have to, have to help them to integrate this SDK into their app, and, and then marketeers can completely take care of the engagement strategies uh, and, and so on. Okay, um, and uh, quickly, personalized customer experiences. So 
the whole idea of using mobile engagement is uh, you can constantly keep a track of uh, um, you know the user uh, user experiences as well in terms of user using which feature in your app and so on so it completely gives you uh, an idea of what features your users are using more uh, or which ones you need to really work on uh, and where are the more errors coming from what are those device types uh, which platform uh, of android is it running on um, and and so on so you will get all those details and you can absolutely work on top of that to improve uh, and of course also personalize customer experiences okay so now quickly go and let's check out the dashboard that we have So it also helps in boosting your user retention. So there's a beautiful dashboard which you'll see here, which shows you how many users uh, have installed the app and use this app, total number of monthly active users, and users who uh, joined for the first time versus users uh, who, who were there the last month and so on. So it gives you that. And uh, based on this, you can quickly track the evolution of uh, you know, the different controls in your application based on this. And of course, you can increase the ROI. OK, so uh, here are some example scenarios, as we said. So on the first contact, um, then anchor to a win-win scenario, demonstrate value through conversation, create a tree-like campaign. Now, the whole idea of this is uh, you, you try and connect with someone. And once you connect with that person, uh, it's easier uh, you know, that you will get him engaged in using your app. So, uh, that's all what we want to do here. So demonstrate the value through conversation. Maybe you push notification, he responds back to notifications, you get to know him more, and then you push him another notification, and then finally he buys something from your service. And then uh, you can have a create a uh, tree-like campaign, as I said, if or else kind of statements, where uh, if the user did this or no. If yes, then go get him to this campaign, else get him to this campaign, and you can absolutely build uh, a tree kind of campaign here. So here's one scenario, uh, as I was talking about. On day one, we, we connect to Facebook. Uh, remember your last video. Uh, this is something like an experience which all of us give while we s let you sign in, in the app. While you sign in the app, we'll kind of keep all the cues of videos that you're watching and so that if you start watching the same video on, uh, on a different device, uh, you can still start, uh, ha you know, have, have a common list of videos that you have liked and, you know, watched and so on uh, across those devices. So uh, you tell about this feature to this guy. He still doesn't connect to your app uh, or probably he's already connected and we'll take care of uh, another campaign with that. But uh, we can talk about another feature, which is uh, one click sharing your favorites with your friends. Uh, now, if he still doesn't connect, we go back on day 10 and say, discover your friends and favorites. Like, that should be like, the most important feature your app offers. Uh, without signing in, he, he will not be able to do that. And you can track whether each of these level one or level two or level three campaign worked for him or not. And if it didn't work for him, then probably yes, he really doesn't want to use our app. So uh, otherwise, we would have uh, tried thrice to get him on a platform. And if he is there, uh, ask him, try and upsell the product, like or not, to help suggest great content. And then also, this helps boost your ratings. Uh, what happens is people who use your app more often, uh, best use case example I can think of is OnePlus. Uh, the OnePlus fans uh, who, who buy their phones, uh, someone who's waiting for that phone uh, and he really wants to buy that phone probably would rate that phone well. I'm not saying the phone is bad, I also have one. Uh, the phone is pretty good, but you would see the, the reviews and the ratings to be like extraordinary, uh, which is because they have a good fan base and they kind of uh, you know involve or engage with uh, their their fans, so the whole social media is flooded with OnePlus fans. So uh, in in that scenario, if now OnePlus asks for a rating or a review, they certainly are bound to get better reviews on Amazon than uh, Nexus 6P, right? And and they do have a better review than Nexus 6P. So that's that's probably because they they are loyal users of that platform or a or a service. And similarly, if you if you know a user is constantly using my service or my app. Probably he's the one who's going to give me five stars, uh, else he would not be using my app, right? So someone who, who's been regularly using your app 
you should not let him go without actually rating your app. So uh, you can absolutely run a campaign for people who have logged in and used your app for the past 10 days or bought some stuff, services from your app. Uh, so those are success criteria for your app. If they have suff suff sufficed that, then probably you want to run a campaign for them, uh, which is rate my app on the store. So uh, you can run those things to boost your activities. That certainly will give you better store ratings, which is very important as well. <coughs> uh, boost the hidden gems. So there are a lot of uh, uh, great features, maybe overlooked by users. But, uh, this happens. Uh, this happens with all of us because uh, we, we are kind of one-tracked. So when I uh, constantly use one app, um, like Flipkart. Uh, I kind of think you know Flipkart is better than Amazon, and and this happens with maybe all of us. And but from the Amazon side of things, uh, they might have a cool feature, uh, or maybe they had a feature called QR scan before Flipkart had that. Uh, so uh, if they would want to run a campaign saying let's push this new feature because our competitors competitors don't have it, and let's kind of lure some people to actually try our service so that uh, they can they can really appreciate our services. So in those scenarios, you can actually expose your um, you know, services which are actually overlooked by the users. Okay? People don't know about it. Uh, I have seen a lot of complex apps where uh, I didn't realize that you know, these are the features supported, especially from uh, tagging and notification purpose. You generally don't realize it till you actually start using the app or you start engaging with the app. So uh, something like uh, apps sending you in alerts and stuff generally is overlooked. Uh, so, if there's a news app which kind of, kind of personalizes your news and then pushes those news to you on your uh, personalized timings, uh, probably I would love to have that app, but probably I didn't know that this app has that feature. So, you can absolutely expose those s stuff here uh, by running such campaigns. And this also uh, promotes its value to active users. And this is absolutely very important stuff. Uh, all the apps which I've written absolutely have crashed uh, in most of those platforms. So uh, I would need something uh, like an App Insight or Google Analytics to keep track of that. Now this guy does that for me as well. Uh, and uh, this will tell you uh, all the details that you would require, what kind of uh, issue that was. Uh, and uh, you can absolutely use this. Uh, and you can even create a campaign for uh, people who have had reported a crash. And then uh, sending them a notification saying, sorry for the bad experience, we are working on it, we are looking into the crash reports and we'll get back to you shortly. Now if you give this kind of an experience in an app, this is pretty awesome. Uh, and, and you can absolutely build this with uh, mobile engagement here. Okay, so this is how mobile engagement works. Uh, basically your app will have our SDK, uh, which will uh, push all the data, uh, usage data from the client onto the Azure mobile engagement platform uh, and post that, the CMOs, the marketers, uh, the developers uh, will have all the access of APIs uh, to get the data and then analyze the data, uh, get the insights into uh, dashboards form and, and so on. And then you can also use this as a push platform using push communications or doing an in-app messaging. Now the cool feature of this is you really don't have to build something like an in-app messaging system for the app. Uh, the SDK will do that for you, so you just use the SDK there, uh, uh, add some permissions, and then you would be done with that. Okay, uh, now these are some uh, concepts which, or maybe some APIs which uh, we have exposed uh, from the device and user's side, which captures data of the device versus the users. A user can have two devices. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, devices are unique. Uh, and then there's something called sessions and activities. Uh, sessions is when you open an app, till the moment you close that app or go out of that app, or the session is on. So session is that period, uh, till what time you use the app for. Uh, but if you want to track certain stuff within, uh, within that, uh, at that page level, you can do that with activities. So you can start an activity on start of a page, like when user starts to uh, buy a product, he might want to select this product, look at a details view, then click on add to cart, then go to the cart and buy it. Now you can, you can uh, 
do two things here. Uh, you can start one activity, and then you can also have a job, which you will see uh, later on. Now, jobs are very helpful in tracking. Uh, now, this, these are time-based, just job. So while you start a job, you'll have to end a job, and it's ideal in scenarios where you're doing a payment, right? And uh, users or developers would want to track, because this has happened uh, with, with me, actually, uh, where we tested it on 3G. 3G uh, internet is still like pretty good, but when this app went into remote locations where, you know, even the low internet bandwidth of 2G was available, uh, things were not working well. Uh, the JSON packets which were coming in were a little big for for that internet, and then you know there was some timeouts which were happening. Uh, APIs were failing because there were like five, six different calls happening to different services, uh, which was dependent on each other. So now, since that happened. Uh, you, for such scenarios, you would want to keep a track saying, we have tested or benchmarked our APIs for uh, this much of you know, delays and stuff. Uh, beyond this, we don't know because it's a, it's a third party service that we are using, uh, so we don't know whether you know, we can actually uh, expect uh, that kind of time from that particular API. So if you want to keep a track of that, uh, you can set a job, start time, stop time, and then report it back onto your service, saying this took so much of time. And this also helps you understand uh, your user experience of your users, because if he's taking a time of like you know five minutes in buying a product, probably he's not going to buy it from you the next time. So so you got to keep track of those things by starting and ending a job. And then you have uh, things like events over there where you can pass on certain. Uh, contextual data at that point of time from that particular page to the backend service. For instance, someone started to purchase something. So before you start a job, you can send an event saying purchase event or add to cart event. So, so that at least you can, in the BI, you can see how many people's, people actually uh, went through this event of adding a product to the cart in a day. So it's 1 million, 10 million, and so on. So you can get those stuff here by logged in as an event. Error is basically for tracking errors. Like you started a job. Uh, the job was running, uh, it went, after 10 minutes it returned some error uh, from, from the service, and then you might want to log that error uh, for, for you to actually research on that. So you can put that as an error, saying API error, put the details in there, and send it, uh, call this particular API for error, and then it sends it on, onto the server. Similarly, crash, you don't really have to do anything. Crash will take care of, uh, uh, you know, on itself, so even if you, uh, do some things like divide by zero, or, or you know, anything which makes the app crash, uh, it still keeps a track of that, uh, of, of those details. Now, application information, platform installed on, all those data are right there. <coughs> okay, so now quickly, uh, in just 10 minutes, let's have a quick demo. So, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. Uh, this is the portal on Azure, and um, this is what you see here, uh, is what I have created, a, mo a new mobile engagement project here. So you, all you have to do is click on create, uh, give an application name, platform, uh, application resource name, uh, location where it's going to be hosted on, uh, and, and the collection name, which is like uh, mostly like a company name that you have. Once you have created it, uh, you would get the details, uh, the connection info. Um, you would get something like the SDK keys, which you would need. Uh, you have the connection string, which you would have to pass to the SDK, uh, so that it identifies which uh, cloud repository it needs to send the app data on. So this is going to be a little important. Uh, while we have this data, we can actually quickly get started with the app. So here's a very basic app. Now, this is just a to activity app, uh, and in, in that, uh, we are just passing one message from uh, one to the other one using an intent, and then we have used some libraries in here, which uh, we would show. Uh, all, you have, all you can see here uh, is right at the beginning, uh, we, in, in the activity, we have extended engagement activity right here on the top, and then we have added like three lines for instantiating the mobile engagement. Um, uh, API is here, so engagement configuration API, uh, and then engagement configuration, you, we have to set the connection string, as I said, we have to copy that connection string from the cloud, and then just to authenticate whether, which backend are we sending the data to, so this gets right from there, and then uh, instantiate it. Uh, 
uh, that's all we do. Now, once you do this, uh, we should be good to go uh, in terms of instantiating the mobile engagement in this app. Now, beyond this, if you want to put some stuff, like, uh, of course, you would have to add things in the manifest. Uh, you will have to add a few permissions because mobile engagement requires them. So you would see a few permissions uh, added over here, uh, which is not specific to mobile engagement, but mobile engagement is going to use those. So uh, you're going to have those permissions in, in here. Because as I said, as you saw, it does a lot of things. Uh, it does notify you. It does notifications uh, in background um, and, and stuff like that. Now, once it is there, uh, what I'm going to do this uh, do here is I have an Android emulator. Uh, this is a Visual Studio emulator, by the way. Um, and it's free of cost and works on, uh, on without Visual Studio as well. So now I'm going to push this to that device, VS emulator. OK. Let it push. In the meantime, we can actually look at the back end. Now, this is where uh, the whole thing is. This is how the dashboard looks like. And what you can see here is uh, you have analytics. Uh, wow. OK, so now while it's deployed, uh, it's just a basic message. Uh, I can, uh, it's just to invoke my SDK, which is done now. So now I can actually go ahead and uh, create a campaign and stuff. So let it load my portal. In the meantime, while it does so, what I can do is I have the app here as well. So here's the project. Uh, my mo app mobile engagement, which you created on the Azure portal, uh, appears here in this uh, uh, mobile engagement portal. Now you can go inside this. Right now you can see total users is one, because uh, it's only uh, I who have been using this for now. Now you can see your users' details, your active users, uh, retained users who were users last month, even now, um, and tracking per source, uh, retention. Uh, it gives you a retention matrix, which, which a marketer would love to see. Uh, then number of live sessions you had in your app, like number of people who opened up your app. Uh, you know, apps like Uber and Ola use this a lot uh, because uh, they, they got to anal analyze on the surge, uh, the surge rates uh, based on this how many users, which areas are actually using my app. So they actually keep a track of the session. Uh, I'm not saying they're using this product, but they got to use a track of uh, sessions so, so that they can know about how many users are actually trying to book, app, book my cab from this region so that they can actually go ahead and do a search. So uh, this guy kind of tells you live session counts. Uh, you can see those counts. Um, then you can see the activity details, um, uh, those activities which it's actually not the, the sa same as Android activity, but yeah, uh, you know, each of those pages is kind of an activity here. So you can kind of compare this to the Android activity, uh, but it's the same name on Windows and iOS as well, where there's no activity there. Uh, so this is the user path analysis, and this is very important because uh, this will tell you uh, the different uh, areas of your application, different pages of your application. For instance, I have done a poll. I have done something like an announcement, and it shows you all these things. Right now, it doesn't have data uh, because it's only single user. But the moment you have more data here, it will start pulling up. So basically, this tab called Analytics will pull up data uh, after 12 hours or so. So you'll see start seeing more data at, at after 12 hours. It's not live monitoring here. Live tab is different, which I'll show you. But this will show you connected lines in, in terms of showing you the user path, how he uses the app. And then you can run different campaigns for different users with different paths. So you can find some users who actually open your app by notifications, and some users who actually start your app uh, from your main activity. So uh, then you have events and so on. Uh, this is the cool part, which is monitor. So while we have deployed the app, uh, let me just check that out. Uh, so I can quickly go ahead and start that one. Oh. I think this was the app. So while we uh, have started this app, uh, it would, it should ideally um, show uh, one active sessions, and I would do that uh, on my phone as well. So this shows you a uh, number of live active sessions, and so on. So let me 
start this up. Now this is highly dependent on uh, the internet connection. So only if my uh, data is going there, so it shows up one here now. Uh, it should show up two now because I have started my phone app as well. Uh, now it will show you live sessions, the total number of live sessions here. Uh, similarly, you can do a lot of live monitoring by uh, activity, which activity people are using more often or which jobs people are using more often uh, by different names. I haven't set up job name inside my apps, it doesn't show up anything here. Uh, events um, that, that you have errors if you have uh, and, and similarly crashes that you have. So you can pass all these details and one cool stuff is the alerts. So I have done is I have another uh, interface for this where in this project I have a UI, so let me share that UI with you. Uh, how do I get that here? It's, okay, so you can see this. Uh, it's my uh, OnePlus device, uh, and here's an app which is running on it. Now you can see I can start a particular activity, uh, I can end that activity, I can actually crash this activity as well. So activity can be uh, I, I, I am on a particular page, while doing that configuration stuff, uh, it crashed, so I will get that crash report. Uh, my app didn't crash. I can crash my app as well, so I click on this, crashes my app. Now I can actually, in real time, go back and check uh, the crashes. And you would see the crashes. Let's check them out. Details. Okay, so uh, while it loads up, uh, it would bring up the, that crash which I did just right now uh, in here. So I can do a real-time monitoring, and what I can do is I can configure it with an alert. So I can set up an alert here saying whenever uh, I can set up an alert condition. Uh, I have set one already, uh, which sends me a mail whenever there are more than five errors. So when I get greater than five errors, I get a notification via email saying, you know, there are more than five errors. So I can come back and check out those, what those errors are and then update my uh, app. Uh, you can set up a new alert on different criteria. So it gives you a lot of criteria. Either it can be number of active sessions. So once your active sessions goes beyond a big number, you can create an alert for that. Active jobs, because you know that I can't do uh, maybe more than 1,000 concurrent processing, so I would probably keep a track of whenever my total number of active users go beyond a point, I might want to look at my backend scalability and so on. So you can set up a job here. Uh, similarly, errors and crashes are there as well. So you can set up crash. Uh, you can set up saying uh, threshold for detection is going to be greater than uh, 10. So I'm okay till I have 10 crashes per hour. Uh, you know, I can set up minimum detection rate saying keep looking for it every 30 seconds or minutes or hours, whichever is, you know, better for me. And then drop a mail to my email ID. So I can just put my email ID here uh, and it would configure whenever there's 10 crashes happening uh, uh, in a window of, not in a window of 30 seconds, but uh, yeah, I think overall uh, it would let me know uh, about that. So. Uh, it would at least have 30 seconds of gap in letting me know. So kind of by the time you get an email, it's like one minute. So uh, that is what it could tell you by setting up an alert here. Now, other cool stuff here is the campaigns that you can do. So you can very easily go ahead and create probably a reach campaign. Uh, now in this reach campaign, what happens is uh, you can push notifications based on either you have an announcement. I create a welcome kind of thing, which uh, probably would have come here up here, first time user. Okay, so let me push one here. So I can go ahead, create a quick poll, uh, create a new poll. And you would see a num number of people who actioned on it and stuff like that. Uh, test poll. Uh, you can mention a category, sales or something, and then go set up. Uh, well, I would want to send a system notification. If it's not important, I can live without that. Uh, In-app notification as well. I would do this anytime. Title, test. Just quickly let me fill this. Uh, you can upload an icon as well, so you, you don't hard code here in the device level. Uh, yes, no. Right, so this should create a question for me. Uh, are you using Android? 
Um, so similarly, whatever makes more sense for the business, you can just quickly go ahead and create some quick questions here, quick polls here, uh, and then expect the users to go ahead. And you can write some expressions as well to filter out your target origin audiences based on tags. Now I'm going to push this to everyone who's using my app. Uh, go ahead, create it. It creates this campaign. Oh, your campaign is done. Uh, test poll one two. Create. Okay. Uh, While it does, you can activate this guy. Uh, this takes a few seconds and then activates it and then it sends, uh, pushes notification. So, uh, one sec. While this pushes, I would, I have already got this notification here. Let me show you that. So you see this test here, which I just created. So I can tap on it now. While I tap on it, uh, you see that uh, poll came up and actually it went because this app triggered it something. So that's how I can actually go ahead and create a quick poll uh, without having to code that in my app because my app has, was a basic simple activity but there was something called as a poll page. So if you look at the SDK, uh, SDK drags and you know creates a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, XAMLs, a XAML uh, over there. We are sort of out of time. Okay, so uh, I'm done with this now. If you guys have any questions while uh, the next speaker comes up. Yeah, okay. I don't think we have any time for questions either. So okay, okay, I'll be outside anyway. So if, if you guys have okay, questions, yeah. so you, you can. You do the Microsoft booth, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, guys.